All right. All right. Let's see. We got that. We got that. Let's see. Audio output. We got audio now. Yeah. All right. Cool. 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 All right. Just had to reboot the audio, Damon. You know, obvious fix. <laughs> An obvious fix for um, troubleshooting audio on a Monday morning. Okay, let me let me start this over. Okay, guys. Whew. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the fastest 30 minutes of your day. It is simply cybersecurity threat briefing, also lovingly known as first things first. Want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Barricade Cyber Solutions, your partner for incident response, ransomware protection, and business recovery. Thank you so much to Eric Taylor and the group over there. Also want to give mad love to a squad sign up. I saw Jill uh, waiting as we were lining up, getting the audio sorted. Thanks so much for that, guys. Let's start that timer. If you're new here, we are going to be tearing down the top cybersecurity news stories of the day within the next 30 minutes. It's going to be awesome. I'll give my analysis and reflection on each story as we go through it. Chat is wonderful. So if you're new here, say hi. Um, they're very, very uh, inclusive and very, very great people. Love, like, look at, I just dealt with audio issues and everybody kind of hung out here and watched me deal with it. Thank you, everybody, so much. So if you are watching on replay, thanks for checking it out. I know it's rough on the West Coast to catch this when it's live. When that clock gets down to 000 in the corner, we will launch into the show. But for the next two minutes and 18 seconds, we're going to be saying good morning to everybody, having a sip of coffee and doing what we do. Hey, Lupe. Hey, happy, happy pie day, everybody. Have a raspberry pie, have an apple pie. I'm really glad we got the audio sorted out because I've got a big, a big reveal coming for you at the end of today's episode. Uh, really big. I'm excited. I'm, I'm super excited, actually. Many of you know about the GRC class that I've been offering. There's big announcements, big updates with that that I want to share uh, after we rip through the top news stories. Also, there will be giveaways and everybody likes giveaways. So we'll be doing all that. Hopefully you can hear the music in the background. That is The Roots, Philadelphia's own, and just love it. Yes, it is spring break. First things first, we'll be at 8 a.m. Eastern all week this week. So, yes. Hey, shout out to Chip Harris. The first day, Monday, after daylight savings in the spring is always rough. This coffee cup can't get big enough. Mmm. No music, Mark Lester. Well, that's going to be a problem. Let me see. Can you could it, can you hear it or no? Because if you can't hear it, we're not going to be able to hear the podcast either. Okay. All right. So I'm hearing that we hear the background music. I got to listen to the mods. Oh, yikes. Lupe. 8 a.m. all week, guys. 8 a.m. all week. It's going to be good. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. I did. Cranking out that GRC course, finishing strong. Cracking me up. Good to see you, Peter Parker. Good to see you. Ms. Julian. Great to see you. Always nice. Oh, by the way, guys, if you want to participate in the giveaway that I'll be doing at the end of the stream today, you have to be on the YouTube feed. You can get to the YouTube feed by going to simplycyber.io slash FTF, right? You'll see it at the bottom there. That should dump you right into the my YouTube channel's live streams, and you should see it. If you want to do the giveaway, you have to be on the YouTube channel. It's the only way I can handle the giveaway. So please, if you're interested, join the YouTube feed. Thanks so much. All right, guys, so... As, as good as this root sounds, we got business to take care of. And that is listening to the podcast. So if you want to play along, guys, we go to sissoseries.com. David Spark and his gang are always keeping it fresh. We're going to be listening to March 14th, 2022. From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. 
It's Monday, March 14, 2022. Ubisoft changes employee passwords after cybersecurity incident. In a brief statement published on its website, maker of hit titles like Assassin's Creed and Just Dance said that out of caution it had, quote, initiated a company-wide password reset, end quote, but that games and services were acting normally and there was no evidence of any player's personal information being exposed. Details are still scant, but a report from The Verge states that Lapsus Hacking Group, which has recently claimed responsibility for attacks on NVIDIA and Samsung, might be taking credit for this incident as well. So wow. All right. So Ubisoft, major video game manufacturer. Uh, I think they're out of Canada. Not that it really matters. Um, it looks like their internal IT infrastructure, their corporate infrastructure was compromised in some way. And they forced a uh, password reset. A couple of things that jump out to me in this story. One, they they tweeted out that SplinterCell.com had been hacked. So I guess maybe they're hosting their own web application. Splinter Cell is one of their games. So maybe they got through that way. The interesting thing that I pull out is that their Lapsus group might be the one claiming ownership of this. This ransomware gang or this threat actor gang is really busy lately. I don't know if you guys have noticed, like, but the NVIDIA, the NVIDIA hatback. Um, there was another one uh, last week that they also took a uh, claim ship claimed ownership over and now Ubisoft. So these guys are going for big, big whale hunting uh, if it was in fact them. Uh, just as a quick aside, guys, it's easy to say, oh, hey, there was a problem. Everybody reset their password. But that is incredibly disruptive to corporate operations right like people who are traveling remote their passwords get changed uh passwords that don't sync from machines that are off the domain so that you get into those issues lots of lots of help desk tickets if you have um it's not good to have hard-coded passwords but if you had a password that was like written into scripts those are all blown out um so this is really disruptive and i'm not an expert i'm not an expert on this but if I'm not mistaken, if it's your AD creds, which it looks like in this case, you actually need to reset the passwords twice, right? I'm sure there's some senior people in here um, who who have, like Eric Taylor, you might be able to com uh, comment on this, but you have to reset the password twice because with golden tickets and Kerber roasting and all this other stuff, if you just reset it once, it doesn't eliminate the ability for the threat actors to to take advantage of the compromised credentials so um very very disruptive very confusing to end users as well why are we doing this like yeah we got hacked but this is like keeping me from doing my work it, it people don't like it people don't like it the command chief tells congress chip shortage has national security implications China's increasing progress towards producing enough semiconductor chips domestically to avoid relying on foreign trade is an issue of great concern for us in terms of broader impacts, says U.S. Cyber Command and National Security Agency head General Paul Nakasone. In an address to House Intelligence Committee members this week, he added China's progress towards chip independence would give the Chinese more leverage to act as they please without fear of sanctions. He added the United States is lagging in domestic semiconductor chip production and noted that Ukraine and Russia produced 90 percent of America's neon gas, which is critical for the lasers used to make chips. Lasers. OK, so, you know, a lot of us who are working in corporate America have have felt the burn of this chip shortage, right? You're ordering laptop replacements for your end user population and you're getting run times of like july august for next shipments um the chip shortage is real it's not as sexy as um you know an armed conflict it's not as sexy as like a zero day breach but it is a real thing and it's a slow silent you know like kind of suffocating type killer so the fact that cyber command is pointing this out as a national security implication really is interesting because think about what they're saying they're saying China, for example, is chip independent, meaning they can close off their walls and continue to manufacture chips to make technology, regardless of whether the world sanctions them or not. Yet the United States is unable to do that because they, they depend on external countries for that chip manufacturing. 
that means that the technology can't be built, which means ultimately slowly in, in the long run, you kind of get um, stifled. So it is interesting. I will point out that I noticed a story a couple of weeks ago that there's two chip plants being built or they were funded from the government or subsidized being built in like Ohio um, by maybe Nokia or, or, or Texas instruments maybe. So, you know, America is working towards building its or decoupling its dependence on uh, foreign chip manufacturing. But again, you can't just stand up a chip manufacturing company overnight and be like out producing. So it takes time. It takes time. Lockbit claims hack on Bridgestone tires. On February 27th, Bridgestone Americas, one of the country's largest manufacturers of tires, sent home some company employees of the Laverne plant just outside Nashville, Tennessee, due to a possible cyber attack. Bridgestone launched an investigation into the incident and hired a prominent consulting firm to understand the full scope and nature of the incident. A statement read in part, quote, out of an abundance of caution, we disconnected many of our manufacturing and retreading facilities in Latin America and North America from our network to contain and prevent any potential impact, end quote. Lockbit operators apparently plan to release stolen materials March 15th if the company does not pay the ransom. Okay, so, yeah, ransomware actors going after big, big whales, right? It's, first of all, I want to... <laughs> especially because I've been going through this marketing thing for the GRC course. Like, look at this. Look at this warning message. This thing is like Hollywood grade quality pretty. Like this is, you know, it sucks if this is your computer, but this is uh, pretty good looking. It looks Mission Impossible-esque. Okay. So Bridgestone Tires, one of the largest manufacturers of tires, at least in the United States. You don't think like, you're like, oh, whatever. They make tires. I don't care. That's like, something i don't need to worry about same with like oh you make you know uh sh like t tire shocks or car shocks like i don't really think about it but guess what <laughs> it's a huge company serving a large purpose this sucks for them especially if they have some intellectual property or sensitive emails that are going to be released as part of this uh exfiltration and, and uh data release so these individuals have a couple days to figure out what they're going to do i do appreciate that they, Bridgestone Tires, uh, agreed or decided to take their interconnections offline uh, until they got this sorted out. Many, many like large companies, even small companies really, but many large companies, they work with other partners to do things, right? So like maybe Bridgestone Tires is, is getting their raw rubber material from some vendor in you know Brazil or whatever. And they're doing their finance and, finance and accounting uh, with Ernst & Young or whatever, right? So there's going to be all of these interconnections, data transfers back and forth, automation. And those are all data paths, especially if they've been set up and configured in a, I don't want to call it a lazy way, but like a open, huge open pipe where data can travel regardless of what it is in both directions, right? Typically you want to when you set up these pipes, you want to say you can only go to these servers and it should only come from this IP at range. And maybe it's just this data. But if you just, you know, connect the two things like Doc Brown connecting the, uh, the, 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 the power cable and back to the future, you can, you can do that and the data will travel, but other stuff can travel too, including uh, malicious actors, ransomware, lateral movement, et cetera. So I appreciate that they did that out of, an abundance of caution. It's it's a it's a bold move, uh, but it's the right move. So we'll see what Bridgestone does. It sucks for them. Android malware Escobar steals Google Authenticator MFA codes. Uh oh. The Abera bot, that's A B E R E B O T, Android banking trojan has returned under the name Escobar with new features, including stealing Google Authenticator multi-factor authentication codes. New features also include taking control of infected Android devices, recording audio, and taking photos while also expanding the set of targeted apps for credential theft. Its main goal is to steal information for takeover of bank accounts, including siphoning of available balances and perform unauthorized transactions. Oh, my God. Users can... Oh, my God. The audio issues today, people. The audio issues today. Got to go to my business continuity plan here. Got to go to my business continuity plan. Give me a second.
Give me a second. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Hold on one second. Um, okay. Hello? Mm. This isn't uh, good. <laughs> Not today. Not today. Um, hmm. Oh my god, this is oh, my headset just died. I don't even know if you can hear me. Please talk amongst yourselves. My audio has gone. All right, you hear me, but I can't hear the podcast, which is a problem. So you're going to have to please grant me grace as I get this sorted out in real time. Yes. Oh, you know what? I bet you if I click this, this is, yeah. Okay, here we go. The bus is back on the road, people. Minimize the chances of being infected with Android Trojans by avoiding the installation of APKs outside of Google Play, using a mobile security tool, and ensuring that Google Play Protect is enabled. Whew. Okay, so that was real-time troubleshooting and business continuity solution. <laughs> okay, so I won't spend a terrible amount of time on this. Android malware... It is what it is. We talk about it at least once a week. And the the fact that it's stealing Google Authenticator MFA codes, which many of us, you know, including myself, the the six digit rotating pin really is one of the best, most practically practical to deploy across a wide user base. Six um, multi-factor authentication option, right? You can use biometrics, you can use text messages, you can use all these things. This one's good. So the fact that it's stealing the the fact that it's stealing the those codes sucks, and people should be aware about it. Your audio out is good, good. So just be aware, guys. Don't download stuff uh, from random places. Educate your end users not to download stuff from random places, and uh, be cognizant of. Um, you know, you're not children because children typically don't have bank accounts that they're accessing on their mobile devices. But, you know, teenagers, um, you know, guys, we were all teenagers at one point. Maybe you're a teenager right now. Uh, you, you like downloading something for free or a cracked whatever um, is very appealing when you don't have money or you just want access to stuff. And this is how malware gets on your stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm all about some biometrics myself. Yes.com. Let's keep on rolling. CISO series. Remember, if you want to be involved with the giveaway later in the episode, please go to the YouTube channel. Go to simplycyber.io slash FTF to get on that. Dell opts out of Microsoft's Pluton security for Windows. Dell will not include Microsoft's Pluton technology in most of its commercial PCs, telling the Red Register that, quote, please not align with Dell's approach to hardware security and our most secure commercial PC requirements, end quote. Microsoft launched its Pluton security layer for PCs with much fanfare in 2020 after developing it with Intel, AMD, and Qualcomm. Pluton effectively bakes a coprocessor in silicon that securely stores encryption keys, credentials, and other sensitive information. The idea being that this data is kept close to the CPU cores within the same processor package, thwarting attempts to extract secret information. Intel, for one, has not implemented Pluton in any 12th generation Intel core processors, codenamed Alder Lake, opting for its own TPM support. Dell laptops shipped with 12th gen Intel core processors will therefore not use Pluton for their TPMs. Yeah, this is really interesting. I hadn't heard of this Pluton technology. Uh, I don't know if anyone else in chat has, so I'm I'm actively reading this article as it's coming across the wire. What is really interesting, so this is basically a baked-in coprocessor that has encryption keys and security in mind, right? Like that's that's what's going on here. What's very interesting is that it was developed by Microsoft in collaboration with Intel, AMD, and Qualcomm, who are the essentially the largest chip makers that I'm aware of, right? Like most modern computers have one of these chipsets on them. You know, like a lot of IoT devices don't, but like regular computers, right? Dell's, HP's, uh, Apple. Well, Apple does their own chips, but um, 
Qualcomm does like the Snapdragon and stuff like Android um, mobile devices. And so these are big players. Now, what's interesting is that these big players are not, intro they're not using the technology themselves. It said it here earlier that Intel is not implementing it, even though they were involved in developing it. They're going to use their own TPM design chipset. Um, and then also they talked about Lenovo uh, down here not using it uh, as well. So I find it interesting that they would be involved in developing it. And it, it is available, but no one seems to want to use it. It, You know, I, I hate to say I'm cynical, but my mind immediately goes to <laughs> like uh, encryption backdoors or it's like it's a great idea. But in practice, it actually has massive performance issues. Um, they're not obviously going to drop that in the um, in the big press release that like, oh, check out this advance in technology. Plus, it slows your machine down by 18 uh, percent. So I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, so I guess know what Pluton technology is, know that people aren't using it, uh, but that it is out there uh, in some capacity. Right. TPM uh, trust trust processor module or trust process module. Uh, the TPM chip is a thing that many computers, including Dell and all these other ones, do ship with, which allows you to do like BitLocker uh, with like um, in a way like BitLocker is a way to encrypt a laptop, a Windows laptop in a way that's um, secure, but also kind of practical and accessible for end users. So this technology, this TPM technology has existed for a while. I don't know why Pluton is or isn't good, but it's interesting. Zero click flaws in widely used UPS devices threaten critical infrastructure. Okay. Three critical security vulnerabilities in widely used smart, uninterruptible That's power cool. supply UPS devices could allow for remote takeover, meaning that malicious actors could cause business disruptions, data loss, and even physical harm to critical infrastructure, according to researchers at Armis. The flaws, which Armis have dubbed TL Storm, are in APC smart UPS devices, which number about 20 million in deployment worldwide. APC is a subsidiary of Schneider Electric. Being controlled through a cloud connection means a bad actor could remotely take over devices without the user ever knowing about it. Furthermore, an attacker could gain code execution on a device, forcing it to physically damage itself or other assets connected to it, the researchers said. Okay, so uh, thanks Axiom Trust Platform Module. That's the TPM. So we covered this story last week. Eric Taylor of Barricade Cyber Solutions actually provided a link in Discord to a video that Armis put out showing this vulnerability being exploited. And and basically the what this is doing is you overwrite the firmware of the device, which basically means you kind of you change the operating system of the device to have other capabilities. And then you're able to send commands to throttle it up, throttle it down, um, cause it to go out. And ultimately you can have the, the UPS device cook itself, okay? UPS stands for uninterruptible power supply. And it is used to, like when the power goes out, it provides power. So, the, so your computers and stuff are uninterrupted until you can get the main power back on or switch over to um, auxiliary power. These things are big appliance devices. And if you cook them, <laughs> they are useless. They're just big, heavy paperweights at that point. So this could be absolutely devastating. And again, you do have to be able to push a firmware update to it. Uh, I'm not sure how real it is to get on the network and then push the firmware update. In the demo, they were connected directly to the UPS device. But the, the, Key takeaway is this is out there and it's a big deal. And um, for my OT people in there, if Clint's in here, if Chip's in here, um, I'm not sure how practical it is to update a UPS device, like a like a Schneider Electric UPS device across a fleet. Um, maybe it is as simple as pushing pushing a firmware update across the devices, but I think it would be a scheduled maintenance. It might be very manually intensive. So, um, you know, Look for this one to be problematic uh, to 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 fix. And you know what really sucks is like you we might hear about it in whatever like a year, two years, three years, where uh, a, an energy place goes down because of this vulnerability. And we'll say, what are you talking about? In 2022, they they wrote about this. They released the patch, and it's just 
not it's not a easy button click to to push the patch out and make sure that it's everywhere so new chinese exascale computer runs brain scale ai oh back in october reports surfaced that china had achieved exascale level supercomputing capabilities on two separate machines built with entirely chinese components from cpu to network a paper published last Friday now outlines its capabilities that involves a pre-trained AI language model with 14.5 trillion parameters with mixed precision performance of over one exaflop. The paper's authors say, quote, this is an unprecedented demonstration of algorithm and system co-design on the convergence of AI and high-performance computing, end quote. An exaflop, by the way, is one quintillion, that is 10 to the power of 18 floating point operations per second. To match what a one exaflop computer system can do in just one second, you would have to perform one calculation every second for over 31 billion years. Wow. Okay. So I thought Skynet was going to come online in Silicon Valley, but apparently <laughs> it's, it's going to be a little bit further east of Silicon Valley or west, depending on which direction you go. But uh, this is... Uh... I mean, this is interesting. Basically, it's just AI machine learning with a more, uh, with a stronger computer, with a faster computer, with more processors. Um, okay, so they say brain scale. I mean, like I think that I don't want to call that marketing, but um, I, I don't know what the term brain scale means. I guess maybe if they're able to measure the amount of calculations a brain can do uh, using science, and then can. can say that the computer is doing that or more than fine but you know computers do what they're trained to do you know humans um or brains work a little differently uh but it is interesting we're definitely going this way as as ai continues to increase and provide conveniences and insights to humans um you know it'll it'll continue to operate there's there's no like ai is definitely con going to continue to grow there's no there's no way um uh there's no question about it and there are applications for ai in cybersecurity and i'm not being um flippant or silly uh ai can can find interesting insights that could allow SOC analysts to be able to move quicker and resolve issues faster can also be used on the offensive side where, you know, for the red teamers in the, in the chat, know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of like standard grunt work that you normally just go through. And oftentimes you find still exists in the environment. You could have um, AI models, you know, run through that and kind of, I mean, that's just kind of automation, but you could have it go a little bit further, be a little smarter, you know, and, and help you in that way. So there is some application there. I don't know what they're doing with this thing, but um Hopefully AI never becomes sent sentient, sentinel, sentient, whatever, self-aware. Mary Coombs, first female commercial programmer, dies at 93. Passing away on February 28th, Mary will be remembered for her pioneering work in programming a computer for commercial applications. She was central to the development of the Lions Electronic Office, LEO, for British food chain Lions in the 1950s, winning out over a number of other applicants, all male, to become one of a two-person team charged with its development. In a time at which computers involved valves and mercury delay tubes, she wrote subroutines for repetitive subtraction and division of numbers. The LEO-1 computer occupied an entire room, ran at 500 kilohertz, and had just 2,000 35-bit words of memory. One of her notable triumphs that she recounted was in debugging the Leo One and finding the source of its problem to be electrical interference caused by operations of the company elevator located next to the Leo room. Okay, so in the world of computer science, there aren't a lot of um, names or, you know, like we, we, we hear like Steve Jobs or Bill Gates. Uh, but if you go back you know, to the 40s and the 50s when actual computers were being built and being done in government research facilities, ARPANET, DARPA, um, you know, you get into these. So shout out to Mary Coombs. Uh, I, I didn't know her name, uh, but first uh, commercial programmer, like I feel like Ada Lovelace gets all of the, all of the love, but um, there were some other unsung heroes um, back in the day. So Mary Coombs, you know, 
interesting. Do appreciate it. I also find it interesting that she was able to get the job in a male dominated, uh, you know, corporate business world that the 1950s were. And it was, you know, I guess nice to find that the meritocracy of her ability to perform the job uh, was weighted heavier than her gender, uh, frankly. Uh, and it's pretty cool that the building's elevator, I will say that there is a NIST 853 control. Some of the uh, people who have gray in their hair know what I'm talking about. Uh, Tempest, where you're, you're supposed to account for radio interference from, um, you know, um, basically radio interference. You know, you're going to put a Faraday cage around your system to protect it. But uh, such an impractical control. Typically, I mark that as tailored out or not applicable because it's uh, gross overkill, but there is a reason for it. And this right here is, is one of them, the building's elevator. Of course, I'm not, it must've been electrical interference. So either way. You've probably heard us talk before about our weekly super cyber. Fire. Oh, all right. So that is our day for March 14th guys. Hey, we got the giveaway coming up in just a minute. So that's awesome. I do want to share with you guys the, um, couple upcoming things because we got uh, a busy, busy week of information security related content. First off, this Thursday at 4.30 Eastern, we are going to be welcoming John Strand, Cyber Beyonce, back to Simply Cyber. He is doing another one of his pay what you can courses, SOC core skills. John teaches this himself. It's four days, four hours a day. It's absolutely amazing. If you want, like Black Hills now runs a SOC, right? They have SOC as a service and all of the staff members in his SOC take this course. And he designed this course specifically so you would be incredibly good at working in a SOC, right? So we're going to go through the full course. You know, guys, if you, if you don't know John, he's got a great personality. He's very entertaining. He's got a million stories. Absolutely love it. So Come by 4.30 Eastern time and we'll talk about the course and find how you can get involved with it. It's also pay what you can model, which means um, you pay whatever value is comfortable for you to get that education. Nobody is gated from it. Now, speaking of not gating anyone, right? Look at this. Look at this. All right. So guys, this is the final promo art for the GRC Analyst Masterclass. Thank you so much. Kimberly McKnight for working with me. Thank you all of you who completed the, the surveys and the questionnaires around the different um, thumbnails. We ended up taking uh, the, the most popular features from a couple of them and binding them together to make one like Voltron super promo art. So this is the promo art. Now, I want to tell you something, guys. Let, let's check out a little teaser. Please stay with me. Let's check out this teaser. I'm officially launching the GRC Analyst course right now. Right now. Okay? It is a pay what you can. My course is a pay what you can. John Strand's course is a pay what you can. Let's just check out this hype video. Thank you for staying a couple extra minutes with me today. Thank you so much for everything you guys do. I'm super amped. I thought about this all weekend. Let's Let's check it out. Where do you go to get GRC analyst training? The red team has all their great stuff. The blue team's got a bunch of stuff now. And the GRC analyst people are left wondering, what do I do? I have not found a comprehensive bundled package of education. And because of that, I am excited to announce that I have developed a GRC analyst course that I am calling the GRC Analyst Masterclass. In this course, you will get a cybersecurity primer so there are no prerequisites about what you already know. Then we'll dive right into the GRC Analyst. We'll cover compliance and audit, governance, risk analysis, and security awareness training. There are not just lectures on material and content, but also labs to walk you through and give you practical skills. I've developed resume bullets for each module that you will be able to copy and paste right into your resume after you've finished each module. And at the very end, I have a module all about how to actually get a GRC analyst job. If you're gonna go through all the trouble to get the skills, why not complete it and get the job? I am so, so happy for this. And I also want to announce that this program is pay what you can. Inspired by John Strand, Black Hills Information Security and Anti-Siphons programs of the same type, 
You will get to choose how much you pay for this course. If you think it's worth zero dollars, go ahead. If you think it's worth $10, $20, you choose, all right? I want this information to get out there. I want people to improve their situation using this training, getting GRC analyst jobs, and delivering excellence in the cybersecurity community. Go to the links below to get information on the course. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you find value. Let's go. There we go. So that is the GRC Analyst Masterclass. It's absolutely open to anyone. The course is live right now. You can go to it. If you go to that site, it should redirect you. It takes you to the Simply Cyber School so I can have other classes down the road. But right now, the GRC Analyst Masterclass is in there. Guys, I am like almost on the edge of tears because of how I feel right now. I'm very emotional. This has been a lot of work. I'm so, so happy about what this class can do for people. Now, a couple of things I want to point out. It is pay what you can. I will post the 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 the, the codes the, the, that you can use, okay? But the course will retail for $49 and then the codes will be simply cyber pay and then the number that you will pay. So if you want to pay $40, simply cyber pay 40. If you want to pay 30, simply cyber pay 30, all the way down to simply cyber pay zero. Now, I'm I'm wanting this to be accessible to everybody and so is Eric Taylor and the team at Barricade Cyber Solutions. I did a live stream yesterday kind of unexpectedly uh, covering the policy lab that is in the course. And Eric was in the chat and asked me to call him right after that. And I did. And he said, hey, Jerry, I love what you're doing with this class. I want to help. I know it's pay what you can, but I want to sponsor 20 students. Barricade Cyber Solutions wants to sponsor 20 students at the full price. So you can get uh, compensated and help cover costs for this course. And students can take it uh, and win it. So what we're going to be doing is there's five days in this week. I'm going to be raffling off four, um, I guess, scholarships, if you will, or sponsorships for the class, compliments of Barricade Cyber Solutions every single day on the um, on the stream. So let's do that right now. Um, it, you have to be on YouTube to do this. I'm. This is. We're going to try this. I have no idea how well this is going to work, guys, but we're going to give it a shot. If Oh, by the way, if you want... I saw Kayla Rose mention it there. If you want to pay more for the course... Um, I didn't verify that this worked, but I created something called an order bump. So when you when you purchase the course, it will it will try to like upsell you basically, and it'll say, "Do you want to add this thing?" The add this thing is basically sponsor co-sponsor a student, and you can add twenty five dollars. I thought you could you and one other person basically. So every two people that bump it. Uh, will cover the cost of one student. So if you'd like to pay more, that is the best way to do it. Uh, but please, if you if you take the course and you enjoy it, let me know. Actually, if you enjoy it, let other people know. If you don't enjoy it, let me know. <laughs> and I will uh, try to address that. I will be adding content to it periodically. I've already talked to Erica McDuffie, who has agreed to do a uh, guest lecture inside the uh, course on SOC 2. So we're going to do that. But let's give this away. Um, Josh, when you say need help, are you talking about with the raffle? Let, let's do this giveaway really quick. Uh, there is no prerequisites, Toby. This course I literally designed to be accessible to anyone. I have an entire module with like nine lectures on uh, just um, like pre like primer i called it the cybersecurity primer so it talks about cybersecurity what grc is how information security programs are structured what networking is what operating systems are um at a high level like literally just what you need to know in order to do this uh class what is this i don't want this, what is this nonsense here spaz d00 okay so let's try this guys um I, okay so i'm gonna roll this Okay, so in chat, you have to be in YouTube. There's a number between zero and 25. Let's give this a shot. Drop a number in chat, hit it. Whoever gets the first number is going to be the winner of the first giveaway. I don't Zero to 25. Drop a number in chat and let's go. 
Yep. Nightbot's doing it for me. Let's go. Let's go. Here, and I'll have to take notes on who won who won the first one. Keep on rolling. Look at all this. Oh my gosh. Wow. Did someone get it? Oh, I saw someone got it. Wait, oh wow. This is hardcore, man. Hold on. Someone got it. Someone got it. Um, James Wales. Nice job, James. James Wales got it. All right, James. Um, I, I'll just ask if you won, please connect with me on um please connect with me on Discord so I can get you what you need. Let's do it again, guys. That was actually a lot of fun. Let's do it again. You guys ready? Um, hold on. Okay. It's open again. Go again. Go again. We've got it. I'm going to keep doing it until we get uh, four winners. Thank you, Barricade Cyber Solutions. There we go. This is fun. I like this. Oh, let's put some music on too. Yeah. All right. There's got to be someone coming on in here. Come on. Is there anybody going to get it? Come on, guys. Zero to 25. <laughs> and you can't use a fraction. That's not going to work. I, I'm literally seeing. Oh, there it is. I see it. Someone just did it. Hold on. I just saw it go through. Hmm. All right. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Uh, okay. So hold on. Jeez. This is crazy. Um, all right. I'm sorry. So hold on. I just saw the number come through. ZR0. ZR0. Uh, on YouTube. On YouTube. Yeah. ZR0. All right. So let's do this. All right. We're going to try it again, guys. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Let's try it again. Throw the numbers in there. Thank you. There's a new number. Let it fly. Oh, that, that one was fast. That one was fast. Hold on one second. Actually, since we're kind of doing this, we're doing this. Oh, 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 oh Jesus. <laughs> this is a mess. Yes, thank you. Yes. Uh, all right. So, oh, there we go. Mark Lester. 17 was the number. Oh my God, this is intense. Mark Lester got that one. Thank you, Mark. Okay, and we're going to do one more, guys. One more. And then I'll, I'll try to come up with a better <laughs> raffle solution than this. This insanity. Ready? All right, the number has been picked. Go ahead and choose a new one. I I understand this is ridiculous. Listen, I'm getting I'm getting a hard time for my from my uh, mods here about how ridiculous this is. I understand. Guys, I'm trying. I'm trying to do this. Okay, looks like David Bravo is the final winner. Okay. David Bravo. All right, so that's our four winners for um, today's. That's our four winners for today. Uh, we will come up with a better solution for tomorrow. Uh, again, don't let it stop you guys. If you want to check it out, go to simplycyber.io slash FTF. Oh, excuse me. That's how you find out about the live streams. Go to simplycyber.io slash courses to learn more about the GRC Analyst Masterclass. Um, yeah, I know, Chinuri. Like, I'm sorry. I tried, I tried with this random number thing. That was a hot mess on fire. I will work towards getting this sorted out so we have a better experience tomorrow. Okay. I sincerely appreciate you bearing with me. Uh, and, and there'll be uh, giveaways all week. Um, so, you know, come back tomorrow. I see Matt Mirrors in chat. Hey, Matt Mirrors. Good to see you. Uh, Matt's been a friend of the Simply Cyber community for a few years now. Love Matt Mirrors. All right, guys. So that's going to do it for today's episode. Again, please check out the course. Um, oh, thanks, Josh Mason. Drop it in, in chat. If you have any questions, let me know. Connect with me on Discord in order to get your winnings if you won the raffles today. Guys, thank you so much for everything. We will see you tomorrow, 8 a.m. Guys, 8 a.m. all week this week for First Things First. It is spring break. And um, it's spring break. All right. So let's let's see everybody tomorrow at 8 a.m. <laughs> and I'll get this raffle sorted out. Thank you. Cheers, everybody.